Good morning, everybody. So we are super lucky because I have my very dear friend, fellow camper, hiker, outdoorsman, and celebrity chef, Michelle Nishan. He is one of my dear friends. And if anyone can cook, it's this guy. So he's gonna teach us today how to make some really delicious food on a single burner stove. Hi, everybody. I'm Nikki Delventhal, and since the winter of 2019 going into 2020, I've been living my unconventional dream of living out of my Prius full time to explore the Americas and its natural beauty. And now I have my dog with me. He's been with me since September of 2020. My best friend, and now my little car camper. That's his name, Camper. I'd like to introduce you to our announcer and official taste tester, Camper Delventhal. Camper, you think you can handle that for me? Uh, yeah, mom, but only if you give me that bone. Okay, okay. In our right corner, standing at a strong six foot two, four times James Beard Award winner, he wrote three cookbooks, had two restaurants voted into the world's top 100, our favorite chef, Chef Michelle Nishan, ladies and gentlemen. In our left corner, standing at five foot eight, but usually sitting at two feet, rubbing my belly and smooshing my face, is my mommy. She's the greatest. Hang on. Wait, what are we doing? Can we just play now? Oh yeah, please subscribe to our channel. What's up everybody? I am tuning in from my very good friend, Chef Michelle Nishan's house. We are so lucky that he has invited us here on our road trip. Now I am not the best cook. I do really simple meals. If anything, I, I literally just cook out of my Yeti, meaning I make salads. It's bad. So Chef Michelle is going to show us some really amazing recipes that all you need is a single burner stove. Yeah, and I'll tell you, you know, you, you, you have a little bit of a leg up and you do that a lot. Uh, <laughs> you know, you, you have a leg up, Nikki, because your, your car is your backpack. So yes. you don't have to worry about packing so light. Um, and, you know, I've got years of experience dealing with this stuff. So I'm going to show yeah. you and you some really amazing tips that just make it easy for you to actually add some warm or hot things yes. uh, to your meal roster so that you can feel more filled, more satiated and stuff like that. Things like, you know, campfire grilled cheese. Ugh. Things like quesadillas. Oh my God, you guys! Stuff like that. Or how about like a spinach and avocado frittata, right? Some of you who don't know about my friend here, he is, I'm, I'm gonna brag about you. Just, uh, just make sure my wife is watching when this is happening. <laughs> He is an outstanding chef. Your food speaks for itself. You had two restaurants, right? So well, no, I had a bunch over time. So used to work with a group called Myriad Restaurant Group. So they're known for the Nobu restaurants and Tribeca yes. Grill. Robert De Niro is one of the principals and was their corporate chef for a long time. So opened a bunch of restaurants there, but the two that, that I'm most fond of are Heartbeat, my, my restaurant of well-being in the first W Hotel, and then the dressing room with my late partner, the actor Paul Newman. Yes, I actually got to visit the dressing room quite a few times. Pretty delicious, right? Some of the best food. And also, I heard, you don't have this anywhere on your website, but it was rated top 100 in the world. You're kind of lucky because Heartbeat, um, I was invited by Taj Hotels in India to do a similar concept in India. So I had a restaurant in India. And that India. one also had an award too, yeah, the same thing. In the same magazine. So we were two of the top 100 restaurants that year. You also wrote three books? Three cookbooks, yeah. I just want everyone to know you and know what you're doing for the world because he's also changing the world. We'll talk about that later. Today, we are gonna make three ridiculously good meals. All you're gonna need is... A pan, a lid. A single burner stove of some type, a jet boil. Having both will take less time. And another pan just like this. That's it. And maybe some utensils, I'm just saying. <laughs> Let's get cooking! Yeah! Ooh! Whoa! Let's do this! So step by step, we are making vegetarian chili. Quesadilla! Yes! With fiery veggie chili. So we, okay, we're doing it. We gotta put, okay. we gotta put chili in there. Cook time. Let's put in the chili. Oh. All right. Well, I, just, I put some white vinegar in there, wiped it out, yeah. cleans it. Yeah, that works. White vinegar is awesome, man. Yeah, so camp, first big camping tip, white vinegar for cleaning. Yep. Favorite thing, throw it in awesome. a spray bottle, yep. go to town. Go. Love it. And here we have wholesome crave soup. 
Um, this is fiery veggie chili. We have to tell them about Wholesome Wave. Okay, yeah, so. Should we? Okay, so yes, it... Wholesome Wave, my nonprofit where we raise private money to help people struggling with poverty and food insecurity double their food stamps when they buy fruits and vegetables. Wow. We created a plant-based soup company because it's all about fruits and vegetables, right? Every time you buy a box of Wholesome Crave soup, you're providing 30 servings of fruits and vegetables to people struggling with poverty through Wholesome Way. Sell stuff, help people. The cool thing about this chili, chili is it's 100% plant-based. We've got a bunch of beans in here. We have carrots, we have parsnip, we have pozole. And pozole yeah. is a seed. Beans are legumes. When you combine a, a, a seed and a legume, it's a complete protein. Oh. Which is why in Asian cultures and in Central yeah. American cultures, rice and beans is so important. When you eat rice, which is a seed, with a bean, which is a legume, you get a complete protein. One of the reasons why I did soups is because soups can be so many things. Soups can be a sauce. Soups can be a filler. It's my favorite part of this soup is that when I first got it, I read the label and I knew what everything was. And there was no additives, preservatives. It's just yeah. Good my my food. my my friend Michael Pollan says if you can't pronounce or understand the ingredient, you shouldn't buy it. Yeah, <laughs> and you definitely shouldn't put it in you your. You shouldn't body. be eating it. Yeah. Like Don't, right? What yeah. are we doing? Yeah. Amen. Exactly. Uh, you know what I also love about this? These soups come frozen, so they're amazing ice packs. Oh yeah! Cooler. I mean, that was my favorite thing because the first time I got these soups, I literally was like, I don't have to stop for ice for a little while and I have amazing food. So that Dual alone. purpose, very important. So good. So we're just going to heat this up until it comes to a simmer and then we'll uh, I'll set up the dragonfly and we'll, we'll make the quesadilla. Yes! Why don't you come on in here and take a look at this veggie chili, huh? It's just... Heck yeah! This is the good stuff. Okay, I think we're almost warm here. I see a little steam coming yeah, out. Cool. So then I'm, what I'm gonna do is, Nikki, is I'm gonna start heating the pan. So when you are cooking, is it good to heat the pan first before you even throw anything on there? Yeah. You want it to where it's getting uncomfortably hot and then you can start cooking it. Okay, so not scorching hot, yeah, but exactly. it gets a little hot. You don't like how it feels. Let's start cooking. Yeah, exactly. Got it. Now the lid is like super important for a couple of reasons. One, um, is you can actually put it on the pan and yeah. the pan gets hotter faster. Okay. Because it traps the heat inside, it creates convection. So I touch it and when I... It, it oh, gets, I see what you're talking about. That yep. was uncomfortable, but it didn't burn me. So you can turn it down a little bit okay. and put it back on the fire. So we have some whole wheat flour tortillas. Amazing. Now, a lot of people will take the tortillas and they'll just put stuff in them. Yeah. And they're like, why is my wrap so chewy? Because they don't do this. We put the flour tortilla in the pan and we're gonna heat it on one side for maybe about two minutes. Perfect. And then we're gonna brush oil on the side that's facing up so that when we turn it over, when it gets hot, it gets crisp. It takes that raw flour thing away, they're not so sticky. Oh. So much more delicious. Wow. Yeah. Would you know? Say cheese! <laughs> We take a little bit of grated cheese, okay. and you can see this thing is steaming. Uh -huh. It's starting to cook. It's going to start to brown. I just take a nice amount of cheese, put it right on top of the tortilla. Ooh, cheesy. Cheesy indeed. Uh -huh. And that's where the pan comes in handy, because this is going to help make sure that the tor tortilla gets nice and hot and that the cheese melts. Okay. It's probably going to take about three or four minutes max. Huh? Yeah. See that all that melting cheese around there? Check it out. That is some sexy cheese. See how that's starting to brown and how this is starting to melt? I'm gonna turn the heat down. Now we're gonna add a little bit of the chili. Let's get one side. I'm just gonna turn the stove off and flip that over. And we're just gonna let it set for a couple of minutes until it's warm enough to pick up with our hand, and then you're going to take a bite out of it. <laughs> Are you ready for this? I'm so ready. Here you go. Right, let's go in. Yeah, I got this side. Oh my goodness. Melty. This is, you have to try this. Cheesy. Oh, I'm making this every day of my life. Wow. Camper, do you want to be a taste tester? What do you think about the quesadilla? You dirty mouth. Here's the quesadilla. What do you think? Oh my goodness, that is so good. Can I have some more? 
I cannot wait to make everything else. So, so now, what are we making? So we're gonna do classic American grilled cheese and tomato soup for dinner. Oh my gosh, dinner time. Let's fire up this baby. Amen. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Teamwork makes the dream work. Stir this baby up with these types of burners. I found is you have to constantly be stirring because then it just kind of builds up at the bottom. Is there something well, that you can do? To no, not really because the, the thin aluminum here gets hot really fast. So if you don't keep moving it, it'll scorch. With a jet foil, you just, whatever you're putting in there, you just have to stay on it, that's all. Whatever it is that you're gonna be heating in there, if it's something that can burn, don't answer the phone. <laughs> Duly noted. Don't, don't check your Instagram feed. <laughs> Which by the way, if you guys aren't following Chef Michelle, what's your Instagram handle? Oh, at Michelle Nishan. Bingo. He has some really, really fun cooking videos. Yeah, also well, just know. supporting and sending out his mission. Yeah, yeah. How are we doing there? It's looking good. It's steaming up. I think we're just about ready. So Nikki, just a couple of tips. So there are these really cool silicone heat resistant bags that you can use like for a hundred years, right? Yeah. So to really reduce your single use plastic and, and what, uh, you know, grilled cheese, is a hassle like this time of year it's like cold outside it's like how do you get the butter soft enough to spread it on the bread so yeah. you can get so what i do before i go on my trips is i pre-butter the bread oh that's such a good this idea is my, this is my grilled cheese kit right here i really like prepping stuff beforehand See? because living in a car camping yeah. everything is such a process so having things ahead of time it just makes your life so, so much see easier. that if you if you look no butter butter <laughs> here's how we do it um i take my first piece of bread and I put it in my skillet with the butter touching the pan. That way it's going to contact the pan. The pan is hot. It's going to get toasty. And then we just take this cheese grater, this microplane, and you just grate the cheese over the top. This is where you can get like really snobby and cool. Yeah. This is the salt Katrina Gouda cheese. It's a, it's a Dutch cheese that's been aged 18 months. Might as well use another cheese. This way we can take a trip around the world without having to leave the Prius. I'm gonna take a little bit of Appenzoller here, which is from where Italy and Switzerland and the old Yugoslavia all kind of like met. You make a nice pile, about an inch, an inch and a half deep. So it's nice and fluffy. And then we're gonna take the other uh, piece of bread and we're just gonna press it down over the top so the cheese packs a little bit with the butter side up. And so let's take a little cheat peek here just pick it up and you can see it's kind of browning on one side, not browning on the other. So we just give it a half turn. So as it's cooking, Nikki, you just want to turn it every 30 seconds to a minute or so. And that way it's going to be nice and perfectly brown everywhere. And now we're just going to flip it over. I like to take this cheese on the side and just get it back towards the bread. Cause you can see these Klingons, those are nice and crispy. You want that. Parts. You want that. Rotate it's a super healthy bread so this is a this is like a nine grain bread you know a lot of people are kind of like worried about um, carbs or whatever but they don't understand that if you really have whole not not only something that's made from a whole grain flour but then you've got pieces of whole grain in it that fiber makes your body fight to get it to carbohydrates so yeah. so it's available over a much longer period of time and you you end you don't end up with excess carbohydrates metabolizing quickly and turning into fat stores so that's that's how the body works but it's yeah. it's really pretty simple let's cheat and peek nope not yet almost almost three and a half to four and a half minutes on each side regulate the heat every once in a while and it's you know honest to god i think it like this sandwich is begging to be dipped into some of that wholesome crave tomato soup yes please so oh my goodness careful it's nice and hot do you see this all right coming in hot let's do this yeehaw yeehaw cheers cheers ding i'm not gonna be kidding oh yeah oh yeah how do you do this this is amazing butter cheese and bread but no seriously right no no you guys seriously. gotta do this you know i'm never gonna um leave your driveway now <laughs> it's cool we got we got room for like five cars <laughs> and awesome. a dog in a bed
and a dog in the bed. <laughs> oh my god. Come here. Look at this. On the menu right now, we have a spinach and avocado frittata with some of the cheese that we brought along. Four ingredients, super delicious, super healthy. Also, I know that when you go through your different towns and stuff like that, you have to see farmer's markets, right? One so, of my favorite things to do is stop at farmer's yeah. markets. And, and support you local know. producers and local living economies. I mean, these are folks who are really stewarding the land. They're often organic producers, uh, chicken farmers here. Uh, you can tell they're using hair, heirloom uh, chickens because you have Americona eggs. Um, he, this this belongs to a Golden Lace Wyandotte, and this belongs to a Leghorn. So wow. you know you can different different breeds of chickens tend to lay different colors of eggs. Do you find that they have different tastes being from different chickens? No, but the, the sometimes you know, like in the blue eggs, the yolk is bigger and the white is smaller, and the browner eggs, the yolk is smaller and the white is bigger. Oh, but wow. they just all taste like delicious eggs. Yes. Very so cool. I'm going to I'm going to whip these up and then I'm going to show you how to make a frittata. Awesome. Let's do it. All right, cool. Awesome. So there you go, some nice farm fresh eggs. And now we're just going to kind of whisk them up. This nice sustainable bamboo fork works freaking fantastic. I'm getting my pan hot. So I have it on my stove. I have the lid on so it can get nice and hot. And then we put a little bit of oil in the pan. And you can see when you look at the pan, the oil's kind of rippling like waves on a calm pond, right? So that, that means the oil's hot enough now to add the eggs. So here are our fabulous farm fresh eggs. But while we wait for the pan to get hot and the eggs to start to cook, just going to talk about this hack. You know, a lot of people consider these single use plastic, yeah. you know, when they pick up to go stuff. This thing is like a year and a half old. They're dishwasher safe, hand soap safe, whatever. But it's a really great way. You stop at the farmer's market, you get some spinach. You can pack it right in here. And reuse them. Reuse them, absolutely. Yeah. That's another reason I love you. Can, you. you can drink out of them. You can do all kinds of stuff. But they're really great because it really keeps your stuff from drying Less out. Less waste, recycling yeah. things. Ugh. I mean, look how fresh that spinach is. Look at that. This is so good. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, it's happening. Ooh, look at that. So here we are, and you can see they're just beginning to set. So you see this bubble here? You just start making it a little bit like scrambled eggs. And once you can see that the eggs are cooking, I add the raw spinach. Now there are a lot of baby spinaches on the market, whether you go to a farmer's market or a grocery store. This small leaf spinach doesn't have to be cooked first. It'll cook in the frittata. And now I'm just going to add a little bit of pre-grated cheese and stir that in so it also cooks with the eggs. Wow. Just like that. So that was my mistake with frittatas. I would just throw everything in and close it without stirring it around. Well, and what happens, everything sinks to the bottom, Yeah. right? And it's it's like really hard on the bottom. And if, if you cook it until it's, you know, cooked on top, it's dry. Yeah. The frittata is dry. So what we're gonna do is, we've got this here. You can see that it's almost set. So I'm going to turn the fire down. So this is what it looks like when it's almost set. Beautiful. And now at this point, we're going to put the lid on it and we're going to kind of let it bake itself. For how long? Three, Amazing. three to six minutes. You just want to pick up the lid, check it every once in a while, maybe poke it a little, make sure that, you know, it's getting set. And just like uh, the grilled cheese sandwich, every once in a while, just give the skillet a turn. And that way you know that you're cooking it evenly and you don't have any hot spots. Amazing. Nice. Another tip that I have, when you look at the edges of the frittata and they're not quite set the way you want them to be, you just turn your camp stove up. And you just blast the edges. And you just blast the edges. It's cold out here. <laughs> I think I want to get just a little more cheese on this. Yeah. You can see it's almost perfectly cooked. I actually like it this way. I like my eggs a little bit less done. Sounds good to me. But they're gonna they're gonna finish cooking. We're gonna give it about two minutes with this cheese with the lid on, just to get it a little bit melty. Yeah. And then we're gonna eat it. Yes. Yes. Ready? Three. I was born ready. Two. One. Ta-da! All right. We're going in. We're going in. Absolutely. Here we go. Cheers, darling.
Cheese, look at that melty cheese. You've done it again. Michelle, you have mm. outdone yourself. Holy moly. Oh my gosh. You know, I, I gotta tell you, Nikki, whenever you can be out in the outdoors, it's cold, you know, you can make yourself some hot food. Just being able to do that makes the experience more. so much more magical. You know, it's just the value. These of eggs the are magical. Yeah, they really, you know, you may notice we didn't put avocado in here. It's because we can't find the avocado. Oh, Nicole, yeah. Nicole. Well, this is why we didn't have avocado. <laughs> Camper, the avocado! <laughs> Camper! You want? Thank you so much. This was amazing. It's my pleasure. So do you feel you're equipped now to at least be able to get some more protein and have some hot food when you're on the road? I just feel so much more confident to do these things now. Good. And it really isn't that hard. I mean, each meal was what, 10 minutes tops? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you everyone please check out chef michelle in the description i'm gonna put all of the links our instagram handles all the above and how you can help and help we can change the world through food can't true. We? and before you go don't forget like subscribe turn on notifications and share with your friends camper and i will show you everything you need to see and teach you everything you need to know along the way have a great day and see you next time. Yeah! The sound of power. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. And the myth, the legend. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. I really hope he's done. Oh, it's so funny. Oh, that sound. And it's not. <laughs> so, we're here at the lumber yard. Yeah, do you want the bone? <laughs> Coming in at two feet, 32 pounds, Camper Delventhal. Yeah, you show him who's boss. <laughs> Fritata time. Fritata ta ta ta.